Hey, what's going on traders? It's Johnny here, TraderX. Thank you guys so much for tuning back into the channel. I hope you guys have all been able to enjoy your Monday and we're all able to end on a green note. But really quick, I do want to thank you guys so much again for all of the support and for tuning on in every single day to my videos. It really does mean a lot. And the fact that you guys are, you know, getting some value out of these videos just makes it that much more meaningful. So thank you guys so, so much again. It really does mean a lot. And I'm going to go ahead and get right into today's recap. And before I start, another quick disclaimer, right, for anyone who's new, I am trading on a simulation account this week, right? I have been the past few weeks, and so I am going to continue on with that the, the remainder of this week. And so I do want to, you know, give you guys that heads up in case. I just don't want to make it seem like I'm trading real money, right? That's not the intention. Just want to be completely open with you guys and, you know, let you guys know that it is a paper account this week, right? And so let me get right into today's recap. So as you guys can tell, it was a green day for me. I was up $112.75 on TQQQ. And so these were my filled orders, right? So for anyone who's wondering, I was trading with $10,000, right, in paper money today. And as you guys can tell, right, I actually only really took one trade today, right? Although it says it's seven orders, I'm going to just go ahead and walk through um, with you guys exactly why I decided to take the trade and, you know, what or why I decided to exit the position as well, right? So um this is a nasdaq we're looking at currently on the one day one minute chart right and market open as you guys can tell is right over here right where the volume bars start to increase and so what i saw going on was the nasdaq right was indicating signs of an uptrend pre-market right making these higher highs higher lows trading between the middle and top view up right and so as it started to indicate signs of an uptrend right on market open what did we see we saw this thing start to actually pull on back right so it started to get rejected by the EMA line. And then as it got closer to the middle VWAP here, we did ultimately see a bounce, right? And so we saw a bounce. I still hadn't taken a trade at this point because I wasn't sure as this thing was continuing to sell off, it, w it was going to start to uptrend on the day and continue this pattern we saw pre-market, right? Or if it was going to change direction and continue to sell off, right? So ultimately... Right as I saw this thing pull on back, right when market opened and find a support, it did a really good job of bouncing. Right, so as you guys will notice, it bounced, broke above the EMA line, right, and then it actually went pretty fast, right, all the way up to top view up. So it did this within a few minutes of a span, right. And so as this thing pulled on back at market open and started to recover, right, I still wasn't exactly sure on where direction was going to be headed, but. So I decided to wait it out, right? Wait it out for direction to really become clear to me. Well, what did we ultimately see? Well, we saw this thing push up to top view up really fast, got rejected, and then started to actually uptrend even more, right? So it it got rejected, fell below the EMA, broke above it again, and started to form this higher, higher low that it had, right? So no longer did it reach the area where it fell to before right it actually started to make a higher low right so this low that it had was not as low as the one it previously had and that's what i mean by higher lows right so we found a support it bounced at the top view up, pulled on back and continued to uptrend here right so right at this area when it started to shoot up is when you know what that told me was there was lots of momentum right with given the influx of volume that we saw right when market opened we are starting to finally see this thing push up, right? Made this higher low and this higher high. And so as we started to push up, what this indicated to me was that this thing was starting to really uptrend, right? So as you guys can tell, that's why I bought into TQQQ right at 706. So as you guys will notice, right? This thing, uh, market open, sold off, bounced, right? Pulled on back to top view up, got rejected, and then bounced off this SMA line, right? The green line. And then as this thing continued uptrend, I bought in at 706. So I actually didn't buy in until this thing was already near these levels. So once I saw this thing form this higher low and higher high, right? And the momentum was there. Look at the volume bars, right? The volume was there. So everything looked good, right? And not only did this thing was it indicating signs of an uptrend it broke below the resistance it was having all of pre-market right so all of pre-market it was approaching the general area of the top view up and then it would get rejected right right on market open but now we finally broke above the previous resistance levels right and so in my eyes this view was more of an attractive trade to me because direction was in my favor right 
uh, momentum was in my favor. Everything looked good for this setup. So as this thing started to push up, I bought in with a 50% position size, right? And it's very important to understand this because the reason why I may not have wanted to go 100% in at the top here was, well, although it is starting to indicate signs of an uptrend, what happens every single time this thing breaks above the top VWAP? It doesn't do a good job of holding for very long, right? As you guys will notice, all of pre-market, anytime it would, you know, cross above the top VWAP, it would pull on back, right? Cross the top VWAP, pull on back, cross, pull on back, right? So it did a bad job of really holding above it. And so as we shot, right, ourselves back up to the top VWAP, <coughs> I ultimately thought that, you know, it, it had potential to continue to run on the day. So I was going to get in with half of my initial position size in case this thing were to pull on back right that it wouldn't absolutely be detrimental and wipe me out right so even if this thing were to pull on back right even like to these levels or you know if it were to break this previous pattern it was having where it was uptrending and forming these higher lows and higher highs right say it were to break that and go south um, I need to make sure I put myself in a position where I'm not like absolutely just devastated by that loss right because it would very well was more overextended at this top VWAP level. Although it could continue to run on the day, there was a chance that this thing could pull back, right? So that's why I decided to not go in fully right around this area. I bought in with half of my initial, um, you know, position size, right? So if I'm trading with $10,000, I bought in with around $5,000 at this area. And what you'll notice is I started to average up in increments, right? So I bought in with $5,000 and averaged up in increments of 2500 after that. So I bought in again at 716 and 723. Well, why did I decide to do that? When I initially bought in, right, we were seeing it try to climb, but it did have a bit of a pullback, right? But nothing I wasn't, you know, expecting. And as this thing found a support and started to curl back up, right, that's when I decided to, you know, really step on the gas and increase my position size. So I added another you know, $2,500 worth around here. And as it continued to climb and broke above previous resistance, I went ahead and added another 2,500. So by this point, I'm fully invested, right? And I decided to start to sell in increments too, starting at around 727. So as this thing started to climb, right? And it, you know, broke previous resistance. Well, what ended up happening? Well, <coughs> the Nasdaq itself, right slightly broke above top VWAP and started to indicate signs of a rejection so because of that I decided to be safe and lock it in right and I started to sell in increments I sold you know a lot around here I gave it time for this thing to try to continue to climb but I kept noticing there was a strong resistance around this area and so that's why I decided to ultimately get out completely right in case we were to experience some form of pullback before we continue to uptrend right and that's actually what we ended up seeing. So this thing was consolidating trading sideways. And we did see some form of pullback, right? But it that didn't live very long, right? Once we saw this pullback, it, it, this thing actually started to run and continue to uptrend, right? So, so from where I sold out to highs, it ended up hitting, right? I obviously missed out on some more margin. And it just goes to show why, you know, it's not a bad idea to only sell out of some shares right at these more overbought levels because there's always a chance this thing can continue to run but there is a reason why i decided to cut it right i always have to remind myself that although it sucks that i didn't get in on you know the rest of this margin right i think i did a good job of identifying where there was a potential resistance area and locking it in to make sense right i could have been hopeful and had this thing uptrend and let my shares run and it would have worked out today for me really well. But say this thing changed directions and completely just started to, you know, die on the day. Then if I'm still holding all the shares up here, not only did I enter the red, but I am would be entering the red a decent amount. Because I didn't do my part in, you know, making sure I lock in my profits at areas that make sense, right? And so that's ultimately why I was happy with my performance, right? My daily goal is to hit 1% a day. And so for 1% of $10,000, that's $100, right? So I was able to achieve my goal today all off one trade. I kept it very simple, went with direction, right? Made sure not to be hopeful and buy in everything at once, but actually average in into it when direction was in my favor, right? 
And so I feel like all of those things combined is what led to me ending green on the day. And so in the future, what I can do is, you know, if I do see this thing start to continue to uptrend, I can always set my alerts for a break above resistance and revisit it later on, right? Just because I sold out of something doesn't mean I can't get back into it. You know, I could have always decided to get back in if I really felt, you know, it, the margin was worth it. And, you know, as you guys can tell, the Nasdaq had a really, really good day today, right? It actually ended up shooting up to now after market hours that just crossed over 11,400 for the Nasdaq, which is, you know, a really huge day. Just pre-market, we were trading at lows of 10,940 range. So this thing climbed about 400 points in one day which is absolutely amazing right and i believe i remember reading a news article saying that today was actually the biggest day green day um for the start of a quarter for the nasdaq or s p since 2009 so just think about it since 2009 today was the day that they grew the most right to start the month which is absolutely amazing and it's on track you know to you know just looking good for the month we're off to a good start this month Last month was an absolute bloodbath, right? As you guys can tell if I zoom out, just the past 10 days alone, right? The Nasdaq has been bleeding absolutely like crazy. And so, you know, it's very refreshing to be able to see these types of green days because if you prepare for these types of days, you know, it can make it really worth it. And so that's everything I pretty much wanted to talk about today. I do want to mention one thing though. Um, as you guys know, I do have some open shares in Tesla, right? With my on my real trading account and so tesla itself down almost nine percent on the day right so for any of you guys who trade these things what you guys may realize is like why is tesla down eight or nine percent when the nasdaq's up today right it doesn't really make any sense because it as you guys um, know tesla is very heavily influenced by the nasdaq so if the nasdaq is green on a certain day, the chances are Tesla is going to be green right along with it. And if the Nasdaq's red, Tesla is um, generally speaking going to be red with it. But today, we saw something completely different. The Nasdaq is in the green, but Tesla absolutely died today. And the reason for that, right, I was looking into it. And it seems to be that um, Tesla itself, they just reported their quarter three um, delivery um, deliveries in terms of how many vehicles they are able to deliver to customers right and so they actually although they um, had record deliveries for cars th um, the reason why the stock dropped so much is because of the fact that they didn't deliver as much as they thought as people thought they were going to right so say for example they were able to deliver say like 300,000 cars this quarter right well if expectations or that they were gonna um supposed to deliver say three hundred twenty thousand cars right and so although they did a good job of delivering in terms of their numbers if they didn't hit the numbers that people were expecting them to the market can tend to um react negatively right so that's ultimately why we are seeing this thing drop the way it did nine percent on tesla is a pretty big amount and if you guys have been following it at all what you guys will re realize is this thing has been following for quite some time right so you know the past month or two haven't really been very well for tesla and you know it's partially because of the fact that the nasdaq's been tanking as well but yeah tesla itself is a very valuable company in my eyes and the fact that it's able to drop eight percent in a day um really just gets me excited right so um there's no question that it was a bit overbought at the levels it was at, right? We were seeing a general resistance area right around the $315 mark. And so the fact that it wasn't able to cross it wasn't the most surprising to me, right? And so now we are ultimately taking a bit of a dive. And so it has previously tended to find a support around the 200 and 200 to $230 range, right? Uh, given the past year on how it's been performing. So we'll see what happens right as it starts to approach those general levels again right will we see this thing bounce at this, these areas where it's tended to before or will we see a break below it right so we ultimately are just gonna have to follow up with it and see what ends up happening with tesla but i'm still super excited even though i have money in it right that this these prices are falling because i made sure to have enough money on the side where i can buy in at these um less expensive levels right Kind of like when anything goes on sale, it may tempt you to want to buy it because, 
you know, you see value in the fact that the price just dropped, right? So the same way that happens and, you know, a consumer may see value in a product given the price drop. I personally love when these stocks fall in value because I'm able to pick them up at cheaper prices. But yeah, that's just, you know, one way of looking at it. And it definitely helps, you know, on these big red days to look at it in that perspective and, you know, not get, you know, too scared or emotional. But yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about with you guys today. Thank you guys so much for your time and just, you know, taking the time out of your day to listen to me. But yeah, if you guys have any questions at all, just go ahead and drop a comment. If you want me to break down any stock, any stock indicator, I'm more than happy to do that. Just go ahead and drop a comment and I will make sure to get back to you and, you know, may maybe even post a video on it. But other than that, if you guys are new to the channel, we really do appreciate you dropping a like and subscribing if you found any of this informative. But that's pretty much it for me today. I will be posting a recap tomorrow and let you guys know how I did. Take care and have a good rest of your day.